Hey, welcome back, everyone. Okay, so this time, for sure, this is the last armor example of combat. I think I've put it all together now and can make this relatively short. I'm going to demonstrate it with just two units. I won't have to worry about ops chits and things like that because I think we've kind of covered the whole concept and idea behind those. So just boom, shoot two relatively equal tanks. I say relative, but you know. It's a Panther versus a T-34-85. So gun-wise, relatively equal, but still uh, maybe defense. Well, anyway, they're different. They're similar, but different. Okay, so what we have here, well, I didn't see who was going to go first. Um, but generally, you have your ops chits. You pull the ops chits, and that tells you who's going to go or who can activate. Uh, so I'm going to pretend... <coughs> I'm going to pretend that the German tank is going to go first, fire first, just because that's how I like. Now, when you look at the, the rules here, I, I blew the, whoop, wrong thing. Oh, we got the rules here kind of blowed up kind of big. As I get older, it's nicer to have big font. Okay, so we, we pulled the chit down. Uh, we marked the unit who's going to be fire. And as I come down here to, we got to come like to seven, I think we start talking about firing. Uh, generally, though, something to take into consideration, which we did mention this before, is line of sight and spotting. Now, these are two concepts that are easy for me to remember because they're, I learned them in the game Panzer. So line of sight just means make sure there's nothing blocking, and there's something called in, inferred obstacles. So kind of like, um, like this forest here might be an inferred. So even though your line of sight string might not go, like if you were measuring line of sight, might not actually touch the terrain feature but if it's an inherent feature it doesn't matter if you go through the hex it's inferred that that obstacle covers the whole hex okay so there's some things you got to consider when you start lining up your shots if it's inferred uh, your line of sight even here I picked this map it's a it's a little more to it than just plain old say flat plains that you normally get like for the Russian steps but here you've got like a hill uh, so then that could be blocking or I could be on the hill and I could see down better or if I'm back like right here I might not be able to be seen you know so just some different things to consider so line of sight and then your uh, spotting distance is how close you have to be close how close you have to be close how close you need to be to the target in order to see it depending on what kind of terrain it's in so you know when you're in the woods you have to be within a certain range of it in order to detect it to quote unquote spot it now if it's not being able to be seen or you can't spot it there's a penalty to shoot at them so I'm gonna pretend that these are just both out in the open alright so those were some things to consider as we scroll down the rules line of sight spotting um, then you're gonna do combat and direct fire so indirect fire would be like artillery and stuff like that and that's can that's done later so we're just shooting now I think I got it finally so we get to shooting and again infantry is a little bit different than the tanks tanks are nice and straightforward I like them infantry is fairly straightforward too but it's not <laughs> it's not bad that's why I always like to start with tanks first um, so first we, we already know I pretended that we activated the German unit first and you gotta look at its uh, unit here can't zoom in that's as far as I can go so this first number here the 20 that's the weapon damage if you will and the white means that's the AT anti-tank value this red 6 is the AP anti-personnel so I'm shooting a tank I just want to focus on the 20 this 9 is how many hexes the range it needs to be so we're gonna count the distance here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is within range of this unit. Um, down here, the 15, that's the attack value that we need. So really, the, the combat stats you need are just pretty much right there. Uh, so now that we have line of sight, and it's spotted, and uh, in range here, we're going to go 15 is the, oh, 20 is the attack value. And this 11, that's the defensive value. So you're going to take the difference of that. So 20 minus 11 is nine if my math is good I know Lewis makes fun of my math don't don't do <laughs> don't make fun of my math that's rude alright so I'm gonna pull up the uh, 
Where is it at here? Oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. clicked on the wrong thing. I thought I was more prepared than this, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I didn't know if I want to make that the default. I recently made some changes here to my uh, computer, and so uh, I had forgotten that I had uh, wiped my hard drive and reinstalled everything, and so now I have to re-associate opening file. Okay, so there it is. So we reopened this file up. Okay, so what you're looking at now is you got to scroll down. Now, because I had them in the open, there's like no bonuses or anything for being in terrain. It's just as plain as plain can be. We're going to keep it simple this first time through. Now, I look here at one other item here. Now, I, meant, I know I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to point it out again. Um, you've got to make sure you include the range. There's a bonus here to your dice roll modifier. Two. So at the seven through nine, there's a plus two dice roll modifier. So now that I've got my chart, I know my difference is the nine column. So I'm going to look at this column right here, and I roll two dice. So I got to flip over here to my dice roller, hit two dice six. I roll a five and a five, which is not good. No, it's not very good at all. Um, so I roll ten, and now you got to add two for the twelve because of the, the range, and you go straight across to that nine column and the dash is a no-go that's that's a miss alright so at this point we would have to add the spent marker and that would indicate that he's done an action now that spent marker that's important because as we like go through like a full game example later taking turns with multiple units um, this will affect some things that you can do because when you're spent you can't shoot or move <clears throat> so he would be out of essentially out of combat for this turn. So let's let's reverse it. Let's say the Russian player might do different. So he's got a 20 for his offensive, and there's a five here for uh, defense with the 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 German Panther. So that that's a difference of five. So the the Panther is according to this a lot more armored. Okay, so we got to go back to our chart here, which is somewhere here. And I'm going to be on the 5 column. Now, again, because diff the distance is plus 2 because of the range of uh, 7, I'm going to roll my two dice. A 6 and a 1. Okay, so 9. I don't think that's going to do much. Nope. It's just out of it. Okay, so we're going to cheat because we want to see some damage results here. So let's cheat. So let's roll. <laughs> let's try this. A 3 and a 3. So that's a 6 plus a 2 is the 8. I think that's barely going to hit. Yeah, so if I go to the 5 column, that's just a D for disruption. Okay, so let's just talk about these results because that was the big thing, was me understanding how to apply results. So if you get a D, that unit becomes disrupted. All right, so let's, let's say I wasn't spent here, just so there's not so much clutter. So let's say he gets, gets hit. <clears throat> and now I gotta put you put a disrupted it's a nice pink color alright so now this would also affect what he could do later on in order for him to go back into combat ability such as to move into fire he'd have to spend one of his turns trying to uh, get rid of that disruption counter so that would be in his uh, recovery phase like that's in number 13 alright but we're not going to do that so let's say, let's take that counter off. Let's say my combat results were a DD. Now, according to the rules, okay, and th this is where I had to get some clarification, but I think I'm good now. Uh, if you look here at the DD, which is the results here. So the DD, any defenders that were already already disrupted before the attack suffer a step loss now he was disrupted by I took the disrupted off just to assume he was fresh but if he gets the DD he gets marked with a spent and disrupted now that's more potent and in the vassal module here that's the only thing the vassal module I had to ask about this they don't have one that specifically says spent disrupted 
they do in the regular game. And when the regular game comes out and has the printed uh, the counters, there is one that actually says spent disrupted. But in the Vassal module, that can't see my unit here. They have this one here, spent disrupted. Because when you're spent and disrupted and you try to recover, you get a plus three modifier to your roll. Now, this is the one that confused me earlier, and I think just because I was reading too much into the rule, I assume there was more to it, but it says that you, um, you cannot try to recover in the ops phase that you receive the damage. And I just assumed that reading that, there must be, you know, why bring that up unless there was some kind of rule that, or optional thing that you could, uh, but basically the recovery is one of the four things you theoretically could do like if you come up here to number three and you talk about ops what you can do where it says like fire move artillery like for instance here you could do request artillery you can do your direct or indirect fire you can move or you can do recovery from disruption and if you in your ops segment there um, receive that spent disruption you know you get shot because like you did a like you were moving and someone opportunity fired and shot you then you could not recover because you were already moving or so I was trying to read more into it then but really it's just that you cannot recover during the op segment you get fired on so this guy here because he already had that spend or whatever he already fired he would have to wait until somebody put a brand new ops marker near him and then he could try to recover because recovery is the one thing that you can do regardless of your disrupted or spent state that that made sense to me you know that's a good reason why you have extra ops chits so we'll talk about ops chits in just a second but that does give you a chance to try and recover multiple times in a turn just not during the ops segment that you take that damage Okay, so I got that spent disrupted because of the DD. Now, it also said, though, if I had already had it disrupted, I would have taken a step loss. And the step loss is simply represented by flipping the counter over to its you know, uh, reduced side. And if it gets damaged again, then you would have to remove it. So if I put that spent disrupted on there if that had been the combat result then he actually could have took a step loss from the disruption the double D alright so let's let's bring that German unit back here Germany uh, because currently oops that's not what I wanted the vassal module doesn't let you wait does it let me flip oh oh I can't keep flipping it I didn't think I could <clears throat> okay so that's the disruptions now, to my knowledge, though, if you if you have a unit disrupted and he gets a disrupted result, I did not see anything in there that says that the disrupted results stack. Only if it's the double D does it say if it's already already disrupted, it receives a step loss. So I'm not going to read into the rule. <laughs> I'm just going to take it like that. If you get a D and it's disrupted, and they say that unit is already disrupted, I'm not going to go any further because it doesn't say it only mentions doing step loss on the DD result so that's how I'm gonna take that rule now if we go back to the chart and uh, let's say you have the 2x again since we're just talking about tech tanks that number is how many step reductions you would have to apply across your counters multiple is gonna be more important when you're talking about infantry because infantry units, you can target more than one infantry unit in a hex. So since I'm just doing tanks, if I had, say, a 2x, that would mean I'd have to apply two step losses to that unit that I had targeted. And if I had two tanks in here, and this is a, a question we'll, we'll talk about here in a little bit. Can I? I want to make that all one stack. Here we go. Let's say that one there. All right. <clears throat> so if I had the two tanks of that hex, I only target the one. So even if I took three step losses, I would apply it all to the single target, the single vehicle that was targeted. So if I had three step losses, two would take a fresh unit to 
um, you know, reduced, and then from reduced to destroyed, and that third point of damage is gone, lost to the nether world. All right, that's pretty much it for armor. Very simple. So that should have been a much shorter video. I know I like to ramble, but now there were some questions that came up. This was from Todd Mew who posted some questions, and there's actually very good questions. One he pointed out in one of my earlier examples, I forgot to add the plus two for range. So that's very important. You know, look at all your dice roll modifiers. And that handy dandy chart I found on the board game Geek. So it's listed under uh, the just Panzer Blitz, the Hill of Death, the second version of uh, Panzer Blitz. And that's where I found some of these really, really good charts. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to the board game Geek at some point <laughs> as I'm processing the video I'll try and copy the the uh, links into the description okay so don't forget to add for range T to me that sounds like that might be a commonly overlooked dice roll modifier because you're looking at the chart and there's a lot of modifiers and then the range one is kind of off by itself so don't forget to add range and then he says maybe you mentioned it and I missed it but where are the rules for the vassal mod posted uh, right now the third edition beta rules are on the ConSim World page, and you can actually go and find the link to the um, the Battle uh, Panzer Blitz East Front, and I'll put a link in there. But right there on the main discussion page for Panzer Blitz East Front, you'll find all the important links for the Vassal module, the rules, and three of the scenarios. And then it's also got version two rules. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, but the beta rules that works. That's what I'm using right now to learn from is the beta three rules. Okay, now then Todd also asks, let's see, if you can only target one tank in a hex, why wouldn't you stack as much as possible in a hex to optimize your OP draws? And you could and you should, and I read that that's one of the complaints that folks had about the OP chits is it made it seem like unrealistic stacking of tactics. Instead of spreading your forces out to, you know, maximize the you know defensive p potential uh, because you can only target one vehicle that that would seem almost like the most logical thing to do so I've wondered that myself now I believe artillery would be the only real exception to targeting one item in the hex and I had to go back and reread the ar artillery rules since I wasn't covering that here I'm just trying to speculate off of memory but I believe artillery is like the only thing um, so yeah you can stack your tanks but you have a limit and I think we have covered this before but in a hex you can have six stacking points if you will and these vehicles do have a limit and they have a little number little hash marks for the tanks here for example this one has two hash marks so I could put three vehicle units in that hex and that would ax maximize my OP chit there so I could put a zero and activate three units and then they could either all move together all fire together so the only real thing to worry about would be artillery that I'm aware of and I'd have to go back and and learn the rules for artillery better before we discuss artillery uh, the very first scenario scenario one or uh, situation one actually has artillery in it that's being shot and fired at against the Germans so depending on how accurate the artillery is you might not want to stack even though it would give you maximum potential of your chits it may not be the safest thing if artillery hits in your hex hmm. now with infantry though you also don't want to overstack the hex like put the full six because when infantry get attacked you can attack multiple units in there so you can kind of almost split the fire, if you will. And there's rules for that. So either all three attack one unit in there, or all three of your attacking infantry attack all def three defending infantry, for example. And you can compare attack values to get your uh, combat chart result. So you that would be a thing where you might not want to stack infantry, at least. So armor, you probably could stack. Infantry, I would be careful about stacking depending on what you're engaging okay so no it's a very good question and and one I've wondered too as well what I would do is is also think about when you look at your scenario your situation setup how many OP chits are you getting so that you can kinda of make that decision do I want to stack up my units because I'm gonna draw a whole bunch of ones or if I have a lot more zeros than ones again you can play out your deployment 
based on the type of OP chits you're putting into the cup. Then um, he asks, in the Vassal mod, aren't the charts available there? No. <laughs> I don't... Oh, well, here's charts. But there's only a few charts. So there's the line of sight chart. There is a towing chart. A unit function chart. A scatter chart. Transport. And train effects. So they don't have the combat results chart. So yes, there are a few charts built into the Vassal module, but not all of the charts you need to play. So that's why I'll include a link to the Board Game Geek where you can download a really nice player made, player aid I believe it's player made, and it has like all that information on a, a two page PDF chart. Really handy. And then he goes on to say, I know it's a play test, but this is one ugly map. Yes. But that's because the artist, to my knowledge, has not been fully commissioned to go and do the counter art and the map art. And this really looks like assets I've seen from, like, you know, just a plain old map maker program. I mean, the, the forest <coughs> is just a bunch of circles all stacked together, and then the road is kind of, like, you know, just drawn in, and there's a bridge. So, yeah, it's because it's beta. <laughs> so, you know, it's an ugly map. But you got to consider... That um, I believe Lewis, the the guy who's writing up the rules here, or you know putting the module together. I think he said he put the map together. I'm not entirely sure, but you know, so his focus isn't on map making. His focus is on testing situations and whatnot. So yeah, it's an ugly map. But if you want to see kind of the the quality to be expected, go look at the uh, Panzer Blitz Hill of Death, and you can kind of see what the counters will look like. And get an idea of what the maps will look like. And it's hard to say what kind of changes to the maps they'll make between now and then. If they'll improve upon it. I think one thing I've heard as far as maps go. Is that the Panzer Blitz Hill of Death maps use kind of like uh, to, to standard today topography type of rules. Where <coughs> the higher terrain is a lighter color. And the darker terrain is lower down in the ground. And I think that it, for right now it's reversed. Where the lighter terrain is like elevation zero and the darker you go the higher up the elevation so it's hard to say what they'll do with the maps to make them all compatible and what kind of art you'll get so yeah I just thought I would address all that. he took the time to write those comments and questions I thought I'd take the time to address it so thank you so much so if anybody else has questions about the game whether it's more questions about armor but I think I have pretty much covered it in full um, I think the only thing that might draw a question is my interpretation of just plain old disruption. If I disrupt someone who's disrupted, do they just stay disrupted? Or does the disrupted take a step loss from disruption? I'm thinking it only takes a step loss from disruption if you get the double D. And D will just stack and you're just disrupted. Or maybe he'll get spent disrupted if he wasn't spent disrupted before. Like if he failed. Well, if he fails and he gets spent... Anyway, there's recovery rules and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, let me not overcomplicate something that I thought I had just straightened out in my head. So that should be the last time we talk about armor. Next is, and I only wanted to bring the armor up one more time because some clarifications were brought up to me. So next time we will definitely start putting infantry on the table and do infantry only type of rules. And then after that, we'll talk briefly about artillery. This is kind of my, my outlined goal. Then we'll cover artillery. And then we'll talk a little bit about engineers because those elements are going to be in situation one. And I want to make sure that I can try and use them in the first situation. So hopefully in about another week or so, we'll have enough of the basic rules covered that we can start applying it towards situation one. And then what we'll do is just kind of record a uh, turn by turn. So that's kind of my, my up, upcoming goals for the Panzer Blitz uh, video series that I'm putting together. And then at some point, hopefully when it looks like a, a decent presentable video maybe we can post it on board game geek uh, right now I'm just sharing them on consim world because it's just easier for me to copy the link I don't have to worry about it going through the process of being approved on the board game geek and stuff like that but I just seem to get a better response just by sharing that with uh, with Lewis so anyway that's that's my goals and I hope you'll be ready for infantry coming up soon Thank you so much. Have a good one.